Hey guys, my name is Pansy and welcome to my BDO grinding guide. One of the most common questions I get is where should I grind at my AP? So we are going to answer that. We're going to go through all of my favorite grind spots and the best spots to grind for money, starting from early game all the way till the end game. Over the past year, we got some excellent buffs to grinding. We got the Elvia servers, which gave us the Hadoom grind spots, which made our money per hour go through the roof. Then they buffed the drop rate of Kafra stone at existing grind spots. And finally, they revamped the Valencia region grind spots, making all these older grind spots much more relevant and people with very little AP are posting over 200 mil an hour. It's crazy. Before we get started, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you find this video helpful. Hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I go live. If you have any other tips you want to add or if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section down below. Be sure to join the army of Z at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy. And if you want to support me, the best way to do so is to share my video with your friends and on Discord. Before we get started, guys, I just want to remind you, whenever I say a certain amount of AP in this video, I'm referring to your AP with a Kudum equipped. Kudum is your offhand of choice for PvE grinding. It is the best, except for a few AP brackets, but that is only for a brief period. So for the majority of the game, you'll be using Kudum to grind. And remember, guys, there are so many various factors which go into how much money per hour you make at a grind spot. For example, the class you play, how much gear score you have, your knowledge and skill with your class, your knowledge of the grind spot rotation, how well you're pulling each pack, the type of pets you use, the amount of drop rate buffs you have active, which loot scroll you're using, your ecology buff. There are just so many different things that go into it. So whenever you see someone making 200 mil, 300 mil at one grind spot and you're making less, just make sure you take everything into account. All right, guys, now let's kick things off with the early game. Now that even console has seasonal servers, I can safely say everyone who starts off Black Desert Online, be sure to start off in a seasonal server. Your progress is greatly accelerated and it makes the early game a lot more bearable. If you're a new player just starting out in Black Desert Online, it is so important to do the main story questline as it gets you introduced to the game, gets your energy and contribution points up, and also rewards you with some really decent gear. Be sure to do the main story questline at least until Valencia. And if you're a non-seasonal character, you can come find Ellie at any major city and buy some Oasis gear which helps you get started out. The first place I want to point out is Helms. You can start grinding here as early as 75 to 80 AP, but honestly, I suggest you just do your main story questline until you can hit 100 AP or get close to it, and then you can immediately start grinding at much more lucrative spots because as soon as you hit these Valencia spots, that are starting from around 100 AP, you can immediately start making three to four times as much as you would at Helms. At 100 AP, you got two options. The first one is Desert Nagas. These are located directly northwest of Sandgrain Bazaar. And the next is Basham's, which is a bit southeast of Altanova. I really like Desert Nagas because the mobs are really nicely packed together. It's a lot more comfortable to grind for me and there's a lot of rotations and options here. But depending on your class or your personal preference, you can pick either or. Both are really good grind spots for this level. Next up at 140 AP, you got two options, Kadri Ruins and Gahaz Bandits. Kadri Ruins are located northeast of Altanova, and Gahaz Bandits are located northeast of Shakatu. Both of these are excellent spots, but I personally prefer Gahaz Bandits. Next up, we have Worgans. These are located directly east of Bashams. It's recommended to have around 160 to 165 AP, and you need a party of three to grind here. If you want to grind solo, you can keep grinding at the four previous spots we mentioned. Otherwise, if you want to grind in a group, you can check this out. Next at 190 AP, you have a lot more options opening up for you. First, we have the Centaurs located west of Sandgrain Bazaar. These drop really nice trash loot, a lot of black magic crystals which are in high demand and sold out in the marketplace, and Centaur's Belt. If you're in the mood to grind with a couple of friends or guildies, you can check out the Basilisk Den, which is a 3-man grind spot also at 190 recommended AP. While it says 210 AP recommended for Sulphur Mines and Pilaku Jail on screen, I was able to grind here and one-shot the mobs at 185 AP on my Seasonal Ninja. I stayed here all the way till 245 AP, it was great money and some of the best EXP for skill points in the game, so definitely check out Sulphur Mines and Pilaku Jail after 190 AP. Pilaku Jail is a bit more ways off because it's in the desert, but Sulphur Mines can be autopathed from Valencia and it's a lot easier to get to, and I felt the mobs are more densely populated here and it was a lot more comfortable to grind at. 
Now let's take a quick detour from talking about money per hour and talk about the infinite potions. The Odir Spirit Essence and the Ornate Spirit Essence are some of the most sought after items in the game and people will grind here even if they're making really bad money per hour because those items are just so important to them. So let's go over them. For the infinite HP potion there are three rare drops from grind spots. The first one is from the Blood Wolf Settlement. This is the Ash Half Moon Cactinac. You can grind at Blood Wolves as early as 190 AP comfortably. Next is the Sherikon Panacea. This is dropped at the Sherikon Necropolis and you can grind here at early as 200 to 210 AP. And finally you have the Ron's Tintinabulum which is dropped by Forest Roneros. While it says 240 AP recommended here, personally I think you can grind here comfortably after 220 or 230 AP with the right PvE buffs. Now for the mana potion, the first item is the Mark Tanon's Land. This is dropped at Shira Ruins. This is a very low level grind spot. You can start here as early as 130 to 140 AP, but the money per hour is kind of trash. Next up at 240 AP, you have the Moncham Forest. Over here you get the Narc's Crimson Tear for the infinite mana potion, and it's arguably one of the toughest drops for the infinite potions. Alright guys, that about concludes it for the infinite HP and mana potion grind spot locations. Now, the last item for the MP pot is obviously the Valtara's Clairvoyance, which is dropped by the chickens or the elephants at Narvon Step, but that's not a grind spot, so yeah, we can skip over that. If you need any more information about the infinite HP potion or the infinite mana potion, I personally have two guides out, but also you can check out the BDO Rares Discord. It has over 13,000 members in it, and it has guides for all of the BDO Rare items and chats for each individual item. There's a lot of information there and a lot of people there supporting each other and helping each other out, so be sure to check that out. The link is in the description down below. Next up at 235 AP, you got Biragi Den and Altar Imps. These are the first of the Hadoom grind spots on the Elvia servers. Biragi Den is a solo grind spot and Altar Imps is a two-man grind spot. Previously, I would have recommended to grind at Thornwood Forest at 245 AP for certain classes, but with the Elvia Hadoom spots out, I feel this has fallen behind. However, you can grind here if you want to try your luck at some Ominous Rings or the Lara Zeka costume. Next up at 245 AP, you have Star's End. Some of the inner smaller rotations are doable at 245, but generally you want to have around 261 to 269 AP for the bigger rotations like Temple, Cliff, and Main rotations. This place is known for being very contested and a lot of people coming around asking for duel for spot, but it's still a decent grind spot if you want to try your luck at some Black Distortion earrings. Next up at 245 to 250 AP is Castle Ruins. They recently nerfed this spot to be a lower AP spot and it's really good money for that AP range. So if you have two friends or guildies, be sure to check it out. Next up at 261 AP, you got two more Elvia Hadoom spots. This is the Swamp Nagas and the Swamp Fogans. These are pretty decent money per hour, but personally, I didn't really enjoy them. I just came here when I needed certain items from them, but they are a decent spot for certain classes. At 269 AP and 329 DP, you got several options. First off is Sikraya Underwater, which is a solo grind spot, and this place has gotten better over time. When the Elvia servers came out, a lot less people were grinding here, so the price of Frenzy Draft skyrocketed, and also with the recent buff to Kafra's drop rate, the Kafra stones are dropping a lot more frequently here. I went from getting 1 to 3 per hour all the way up till 20. So this place has definitely stayed relevant and it's on par with some of the Elvia grind spots. So definitely check it out. Also at 269, 329, you have two duo grind spots. The first one is Pandix Island and this is a decent place to grind for money per hour. But players generally grind here for the merchant ring piece. Next you have Tunkata. As a duo grind spot, this is actually low-key busted because the price of Turo's belt on NA are at 342 mil at base. So this is an excellent place to grind with a friend for money per hour, or players also grind here for the Flame of Despair for their Fallen God armor and the Lara Zeka costume. At 281 AP, you got two of my favorite grind spots in the game, that being the Elvia Hadoom, Red Orcs, and Bloody Monastery. These are really dangerous grind spots, so make sure you have at least 345 DP. Even at 360 DP, I've been comboed out pretty quickly at the orcs in a stun lock, so just be careful so you don't lose any crystals. If you want some tips, 
At Red Orcs, it's preferable to pick up a double or a triple rotation. You make more money per hour than a single rotation. And as for Bloody Monastery, using human damage crystals is actually kind of cracked, so be sure to check that out. At around 285 AP and good consumable rotations, you can grind Ash Forest, granted you have enough DP to survive. Players generally grind here for the Deborica Necklace because Kron enhancing a Deborica Necklace is a good alternative to buying a Pen Latens or a Pen Ogre Ring, but also players grind here for the Merchant Ring piece or the Laura Rezeka costume. And finally, we have our last grind spot for this guide that is at 300 AP, you have Olin's Valley. Now, players at this gear score don't need advice from me and probably are not watching this guide, but I just want to shout it out just so you guys know. Players generally grind here for the Merchant Ring piece or the Lars like a costume, but with the right amount of optimization and min-maxing, they have reported to be making over 500 mil an hour in a three-man group. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And remember, this isn't a race. It's not a sprint. Play at your own pace. Don't burn yourself out. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out with the algorithm. And finally, check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy. Anyway, take it easy, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.